Are we live? Oh, excellent. Hey, what's up, hacksters? Uh, I'm really excited to bring you today's tech highlight. So recently we did a uh, video for Circuit Python Day in collaboration with David Groom, the communi community editor at Make Magazine on the Raspberry Pi Pico 2. And that was extremely chaotic <laughs> as expected. So neither of us had worked with it before, but check that out if you want to uh, see something super fun. Today, we've got some more Raspberry Pi stuff for you. I'm very excited to unbox the AI kit, which uh, I'm gonna be adding on to my Pi 5. We also have the Pi 5 two gigabyte edition, which is a new lower uh, memory edition that is $10 cheaper than the four gigabyte version. We'll be digging into both of those in just a second. I've only got 19 minutes to do this, so I'm gonna try and uh, keep us on track and not ramble too much, but here we go. So uh, first up, you can find all kinds of projects for not just the Raspberry Pi 5, but other versions of the Res Pi on hackster.io, as you probably know. Uh, tons of different tutorials, including this really cool one by Arnav Sharma. Uh, if you're familiar with the Pi 400, which is a Raspberry Pi 4 in, built into a Raspberry Pi keyboard uh, so that it's a single module, he made his own version of that, but with the Pi 5, including a Seed Shao, which I think is a really interesting project. So go check that out a lot. And of course, you can publish your own projects too, but go check those out. Anyway, so we have this Raspberry Pi AI kit, which is available now at $70. You can find the uh, official Raspberry Pi blog post in the description. Check out all the links in the description below for various types of things. But let's just get it out of the box already because I'm excited. All right, so uh, I've been looking forward to this thing for a while. You've got a uh, getting started guide. They've got really nice documentation for this, actually. Uh, and what it consists of is a Raspberry Pi M.2 hat plus, and we're gonna dig into that spec because I was curious, and a Halo AI acceleration module. So um, I'm digging this out. We've got 13 teraops of uh, inferencing performance fully integrated into Raspberry Pi's camera software stack. They've got a bunch of examples for this. There's a model zoo available from Halo. Uh, again, more about the specification in a minute. And uh, you've got 16 millimeter stacking headers. So this is important to me. Uh, you've got the Raspberry Pi Active Cooler, which is designed to help you run the Pi 5. They do recommend using this whether or not, you know, Previously, it was like if you're doing something heavy duty like AI on a Raspberry Pi, you'd want to use active cooling. Now they kind of recommend this for all uses of Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to be mounting that actually onto this Pi 5 that I'm setting up right now. I'm really excited about it. <laughs> I haven't actually set it up yet. So uh, we're going to do that in a while and I'm going to stick this on top of it. But this again, yeah, this is designed to mount on top of an active cooler. So uh, you got your standoffs there. Um, some headers all the way through to your Raspberry Pi uh, pin stack. And here we have the module itself. Come out of there. Come out. This is what I get for unboxing live, but you know it's authentic because I'm struggling with the packaging. Okay, so beautiful. It's already pre-mounted on there. You don't have to do anything. You've got a little knurled screw, uh, thumb screw situation there. And yeah, uh, this mounts onto your standard outer four uh, mounting holes on the Pi. But also they've passed through these two here. Uh, you can see, so you can still, actually, that's a new one. Uh, so you can still use other add-ons, but yeah, this is designed to go over the active cooling thingy. Um, yeah, I'm not going to plug this in entirely right yet because I want to set up my Pi before I assemble the entire thing, but let's take another look at the other side. And you've got that uh, flexible flat connector on there. Pretty minimal from there. I love these like pass through headers. They're so interesting. I've only seen these in the last like year or two, but uh, they've probably been around longer, but you can just like stick headers all the way through there into your pie, which I think is neat. <laughs> cool, let's read a little bit more about this. So uh, they have some recommendations for the types of inferencing you can do with this. Uh, so the neural networks for object detection, semantic and instance segmentation, pose estimation and facial landmarking to name a few. So they don't 
call out uh, generation as an option on this device, but I'm sure that some people will be doing that. You've got 13 tops again, we talked about this. This is all sort of stuff that's mentioned on the packaging. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, but yeah, you can run multiple neural networks on a single camera or singular multiple neural networks with two cameras concurrently. And that two camera and two display capability is fully supported by the Raspberry Pi. You've got that extensive model zoo available from Halo AI. You can see some of the examples they've got on here. And at the bottom of the Raspberry Pi article, they also have some videos of examples of these things that you can do. So object recognition, see the truck down at the bottom there. Um, <laughs> even works when traffic on the A14 is moving. Uh, pose estimation, see if someone's casual or suspicious. Uh, object rec recognition. And then you get the... Uh, subject segmentation, you can see how they've highlighted different objects. So the plant is in red and the person is in green on there. Very cool. Uh, anything I'm missing here? Oh yeah, the software stuff. So, um, where is the, oh yeah, the Raspberry Pi Cam apps suite of cam camera applications now supports uh, integrating this neural network inferencing. So it doesn't, you don't have to do as much uh, tweaking and like integrating on your own, which is definitely something that's a little bit intimidating for me. I am, uh, hi, I'm your host, Alex Glow. I am not formally trained as either an electrical or a software engineer. And for some reason, software is just like hella intimidating to me, which is part of why I haven't done a ton of Raspberry Pi stuff in the past. So I'm really excited to actually set up a fully working one. And I'll show you in a minute, I've actually been designing my own little um, holder uh, case rack thing so that I'll be able to integrate all the parts together and um, have a, a custom little box on my desk. It's gonna look so cool. <laughs> all right, so. Further resources listed at the bottom. You've got a really nice documentation page, actually. So here's the documentation. You can search it. Uh, and then if you go down, actually, if I have this in a different aspect ratio, you get a sidebar here, including a getting started guide that they mentioned there. Doop. Let's make that look nicer. There we go. Haha. <laughs> okay. So. We also have a deep dive on this from Gareth on the Hackster News team. So you can read a little bit more there. Uh, both stuff from uh, Eben Upton and uh, from other people on the team, including CEO or Danon from Halo. So read some more about that on Hackster News. And there's some really interesting other stuff mentioned in Gareth's article, which is uh, other potential AI hardware coming down the line from Raspberry Pi, including potentially an AI camera, uh, and then also a display of some type. So you can read more about that on our previous article from Gareth as well. Really cool stuff. So lots to dig into there. Again, you can get this for $70 on Raspberry Pi and from any of their approved vendors here. We already looked at that. Here's another model zoo. You can also check out the official Halo page for the M.2 AI acceleration module that's on there. And so the M.2 hat plus, I was like, what is a hat plus? Why is it called that? Uh, turns out there's a new spec they announced in December of 2023. Uh, supposedly the completed spec, uh, it's, it was a uh, speculative or a draft spec at that point. I haven't been able to find if there is an updated final version, but from what we know right now, I've pulled up the version from just last December and we've got here the PDF. Um, oh yeah, they had an article about, here's the one from December 8th last year. Uh, and here is the hat plus specification. So they, they start out with the original hat specification and they talk about like why you would want to do it. Um, largely for forward compatibility and stuff like that to make sure that your uh, hats will be compatible, but also in order to be able to market it as a hat plus board, uh, you'll want to conform to this spec. So the original hat spec specification, and then they go into the uh, changes, the main changes with the hat plus. And so it has to be electrically compatible with the standby power state where the five volt power rail is powered. This has to do, I think, with the fact that they added a power button on the Pi 5. I could be wrong, but that's what I believe is the case. 
Uh, you've also got a link to the GitHub where you can check out more about the hats. Uh, it's less prescriptive about hat physical dimensions, so you've got more options for what shape it can be. Kind of cool. Uh, hat EEPROM content is now much simpler, and a special class of hat pluses can be stacked with an extra hat plus on top uh, for a maximum stack of two hats. Uh, so these are electrically backwards compatible with older Raspberry Pi models, but may need up-to-date software and firmware to function correctly. So again, they tell you why you should uh, follow this spec for future hats slash hat pluses. And yeah, you can find this from their article back in December. Check it out. Uh, if you want to know more about the Raspberry Pi 5 in general, check out our unboxing from, uh, wow, about a year ago. Uh, so now we've got this two gigabyte version and it's not just that it's got less uh, flash and it's there or RAM rather and is therefore uh, cheaper, but it's also got a system on chip that has been stepped down. So uh, the whole thing ends up being about $10 cheaper, but yeah, where's the, uh, he goes into it further down here. Okay, so uh, Evan Upton, the uh, founder of Raspberry Pi says, uh, part of it is the lower RAM and part of it is that the BCM 2712 uh, has lost only features that were never actually used. And it also used to contain functionality, which was intended to serve other markets, which they don't need. And this dark silicon, which is an amazing term, is permanently disabled in the chips that we use, but takes up die space and therefore adds cost. Uh, so now they've taken away all that extra um, functionality and all those extra capabilities that like, because they've created their own OS, they can be certain that they're never going to need that extra silicon. And therefore you, uh, you know, they're able to create a cheaper version of the SOC, which is super cool. So you can find this uh, on Hackster News as well, also from Gareth, our resident expert. Uh, I was curious, so I went into uh, the differences between various types of Raspberry Pi 5s and other previous versions of the Pi. So uh, we've got the eight gigabyte version still available for $80. Well, you know, very popular, but uh, still around for $80. You've got the four gig version for $60. And then you've got this new two gigabyte $50 version, which you can find on SparkFun as well as other vendors. Um, there's also a Raspberry Pi case. So remember we talked about the active cooling that they recommend for all applications of Pi 5 now? That is built into this special case that they have for the Raspberry Pi 5, which you can find at various vendors. Um, check that out. It's got a heat sink and a fan. Uh, you would stick the heat sink onto your processor. And then, yeah, you can stack the cases, which I think is pretty cool too. There is also, I should note, this Raspberry Pi 5 desktop kit that you can get for about $120 on various uh, vendors. And that also includes the Raspberry Pi official beginner's guide, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and that's also by Gareth, our resident Pi expert. Um, so yeah, you can find out all that is included in there. You've got the uh, keyboard, mouse, all that good stuff. <laughs> you don't need to have the official Raspberry Pi branded uh, SD card holder or uh, keyboard and mouse, but I can attest that it definitely makes it feel like it works better. <laughs> all right, so um, I was curious about the exact differences because now this is the Pi 5 um, two gigabyte one. Uh, I think, oh, actually, you know what? This is the, this should be about the same, but yeah. Going down to the two gigabyte one. And I was like, you know, why would you necessarily go for this two gigabyte Pi 5 versus a Pi 02W? And you can just compare the specs a little bit. You know, you can see that the, the processor is definitely miles away better. You've also got those extra supports for displays and cameras and stuff. And just like everything is still nicer. That said, if you're not looking for something incredibly intense, the uh, Pi Zero 2W is still around. It's still $15. So, you know, compared to 50, depending on what you're wanting to do with it, it could still be a good choice. But uh, yeah, if you want that higher processing power, the five is still very good. Although you will want to, it is more power hungry for sure. Uh, I was looking around and found this Adafruit uh, new product introduction. 
where they talked not about not not only about the Pi 5 2 gigabyte version, but also about the Pi 02W, which is now coming with a header as well. So uh, again, you can get that one for $15, and you can now get it with headers integrated as well, uh, if you don't want to do the soldering yourself. <laughs> Uh, I also thought it would be fun to show you uh, what I've been doing in Onshape to create my own little like custom pie case. I was like, what exactly what I want? Well, I want it to have lots of airspace. So I'm basically creating these layers uh, that can be 3D printed and uh, I'm gonna try testing that out today. So you've got where you would mount your pie. I gotta make sure I've got long enough screws to mount that in the standoffs. I was gonna take a look at that. The ones on the kit, let's actually, let's actually open this up. Okay, so the ones on the kit do look like they could possibly make it through. It's got to make it through both the uh, the base board that I'm mounting it to, as well as the uh, the pie itself, and then up into the next standoff that will hold up the next layer. So I do have some longer standoff bolts. I've got my whole little like drawer of standoffs here <laughs> uh and so we'll make it work but yeah i'm kind of curious i may be reworking that to uh have a little bit different of thickness and stuff so but uh so we've got you know your swappable pie layer on there then you've got this like top layer which is just literally just to hold uh space for for example, things that are plugged into the headers and stuff. And then there's going to be this dust cover, basically, that you can put on. Eventually, I think it'd be cute to have it be like a hinged mount on here. But this will be basically a very expandable, swappable system where I can modularize it and add like a camera holder and things like that. Uh, and then there will be one more level on the bottom to create airflow underneath. So it'll all just be a very airy. And right now, it's very, very basic. But um, I'm calling my... Uh, I'm calling my Pi 5 art because I'm re-listening to the Murderbot series, Murderbot Diaries series by Martha Wells, which is an incredible work of modern sci-fi. I love it. It's hilarious. It's um, progressive. It's just like, it's, it's really funny, good sci-fi. Uh, and anyway, so I'm naming my Pi 5 computer art after, a, well, you'll just have to read the series. <laughs> uh, but Let's see, anything I missed? I think we got into everything. I was going to uh, actually unbox this Pi 5 2 gigabyte version. I'm pretty sure it looks the same as the, the previous versions with more RAM, but let's just take a look at the packaging and stuff. I've got a couple minutes left. Check it out. <laughs> it's upside down in there. But you got your various, ah, there we go. Ooh, look, there's another thing in here. Aha. Uh -huh. What does that look at the, oh, read the documentation, I guess. Hold it by the edges. Don't cover it up or it'll get too hot. Don't touch the stuff. <laughs> uh, what is this one, I wonder? Give space above the processor, maybe? I think this could be a little bit more uh, explicit about what they mean exactly but anyway uh do that stuff and or don't do it <laughs> case depending uh and then you've got this uh pcie expanders uh we talked about that's what the, one of the things that the halo kit works with um you can see this cable coming off the bottom and that's going to plug into your board in the pcie expander uh i would probably put it on my eight gigabyte version, but yeah, that's gonna be all part of one piece. Very cute. And uh, let's just put these side by side, or top to bottom, as it were. So up here is the eight gigabyte version. Let me double check that. Yes. And then down here is the two gig gigabyte version. And they look the same, surprise. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. Thanks for joining me for this quick, little exploration of the new Raspberry Pi AI kit and also the two gigabyte version of the Raspberry Pi 5, as well as my future plans. Uh, I'll definitely keep y'all updated about my little very, very basic case. But the idea is that like right now I'm going to print it as is and see how everything fits together and like maybe modify the thicknesses of them, some things. And then we'll get real fun with the uh, aesthetic expression and stuff. And I think that's going to be a ton of fun coming up. So thanks for joining me and hack on. <laughs>